The topic we want to cover today, we've gotten a lot of questions from folks about housing violations. They seem to come up. Uh, mainly, I see these a lot with investment properties. Housing code violations, having them resolved or released in advance of closing, and the underlying fines and penalties associated with those violations. Can you let us give us a little bit of an insight on how these violations can hold up a closing, how they can cause uh, major expenses along the way and some pitfalls, maybe some ways to avoid that. It's ironic that you picked this subject. Uh, I had a closing in West Warwick about two weeks ago, and it probably got extended for about two weeks just because of a housing violation, believe it or not. <clears throat> it was a foreclosed piece of property with multiple violations on it. And by the way, it had been on for quite some time with a per diem, uh, a per diem fine. So we want to close on it and assume it because the buyer was a rehab specialist was going to rehab it. We had quite a problem with them because they didn't want to assign it at first. They said, no, we want to correct them. So well, we get a foreclosure from a bank. They're not going to correct it. Finally, they did agree to allow the, us to assume it. We stipulated, we had to sign an actual stipulation that was entered in that we would do all of the work that was required. And the foreclosing bank had to pay $10,000. Um, and that was like a break because it was like a hundred dollars a day and it, it had like a, a face amount of 30 or 40,000, but they actually accepted $10,000. So it could be significant. That was a bank, but it could be the same thing with a homeowner who kind of ignored it. Uh, I think a lot of people get these and they really don't read the fine print, which called for a per diem. And, um, that could really catch up to you. And yet, again, we had a hand delivered check for $10,000. It took about a solid two weeks, you know, him trying to reach me, me trying to reach him, reach the town manager. It uh, dragged the closing on a couple of weeks. Now it was a bank, but it could have easily been a homeowner also who sometimes these things happen. People just kind of forget about it. I think it's something minor and don't realize the far reaching consequences of these type of liens. Central Falls now is tying the housing violation to a smoke certificate, which is pretty, pretty sneaky and pretty effective. So you go in to get a smoke cert, he's these the fire inspectors say, no, you got a housing violation. So again, no closing. Wow. So that's kind of unique. And, and Melissa told me about that yesterday. I hadn't run across that yet, but she, you know, it's all trial and error, and she just ran across it and they couldn't get a smoke without a smoke, there's no closing. So wow. that, you know, it's a little devious. Yeah.